Flames Nation, Noah, it's Frenzy here, and we're back with another summer edition of Shot Down in Flames presented by Flames Nation. We're here in the summertime. The crazy stuff has happened with the Calgary Flames already. There's some stuff that still needs to kind of happen, some dominoes that need to fall. But uh, we're kind of getting into the silly season here where we got to come up with some unique stuff to talk about here because uh, it's a little quiet here in Flames in uh, in Flames land right now, but we got some stuff that we want to talk about. But before we dive in here, before I bring in Noah, um, I got to let you guys know that we've got a new summer sponsor for Flames Nation, Shot Down in Flames. We are bringing on Montana's. Now, Montana's has got all-you-can-eat rib fest. This is from July 19th to September 12th. And Montana's is the barbecue expert in Canada. They smoke their own ribs in house every day, then sauce them right on the fire grill, right for you to order. Montana's is legendary. All you can eat ribs promotion is now seven days a week until the end of the summer. So come on, come down to Montana's, get Montana's messy to win uh, hashtag that to win weekly prizes. Montana provides a warm atmosphere that encourages guests to be themselves with no judgment. When you're eating those ribs, we're all about the fun, friendly experience at Montana. So head on down to Montana's hashtag that get Montana's messy to win some weekly prizes. And thank you to jumping on board flames nation and shot down in flames for being uh, a sponsor of the summer. So Noah, Not like I said, not a whole lot happening here, but one thing that did happen today as we record the podcast on Tuesday, this is August the 2nd, uh, the Calgary Flames farm team in the AHL, formerly known as the Stockton Heat, has officially announced that they have a new name. And it is the mm-hmm. it is in fact the the Calgary Wranglers. It literally just as we as you know, we hit record, we hopped on, it popped up on Twitter. So it's right yep. there. If you go to the former Stockton Heat Twitter page, the Calgary Wranglers there, it's changed. Uh, whether that's their logo or not, um, there's something there with a W with uh, the Flames colors. I know a lot of people were assuming that it was going to be the the red and blue, um, like like the Hitmen had worn a couple years ago. But what's your instant thought? I know you were a little vocal <laughs> vocal on Twitter about the name. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, Cowboys, you know, in my opinion, it sounds more Calgary esque. I think than Wranglers, right? Okay. And I would have done something more in that sense. Like I'm not trying to take anything away from the history of the Calgary Wranglers in the city, not at any single point. But I don't know. Just Calgary Cowboys has more of a just a Calgary esque feel to it compared to the Wranglers. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Now you don't want to get that confused with the nightclub that's like right across the street. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, no. Yeah. It's. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, what i think i mean i was and you know what i've got the logo uh up here on my mm-hmm. screen and it it looks good like it it looks a lot better than i kind of thought it was going to look and it's got i've come i've come around to it now in the last few minutes uh since i saw the news it it looks quite good well that's the biggest thing too about all this too is it like people people knew it was coming there was a lot of stuff that leaked and a lot of stuff that actually leaked from flames nation about the name of the wrangler so a lot of people knew it was coming you know there was talks of uh the gene company was trying to block it for copyright reasons in the name or something so whether they settled that or whatever it is or if that was true who knows but it's obviously here um i think yeah like i said a lot of people might have been expecting them to do what the what the hitmen wore a couple of years ago when they did that corral series where it was like red and blue yeah. and you know it's just i think it, it like they're just using it for the name right they're not going to go back to the original colors and stuff like that they're just using it strictly as the name um people got to remember that this is a new team that's moving to calgary and they're going to be playing out of the saddle dome and they probably want to uh, keep it as similar as possible. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's some of the same, uh, I guess, Jersey style as what the flames are wearing right now, just with a W incorporated, maybe a little bit different, but the same color scheme uh, and whatnot with that. So it's cool, man. Like I, I like it. And yeah. like, I, I like the name Wranglers. I like the country theme, you know, um, I don't know if it would be kind of weird if they they brought him back and they were the, just the Calgary Heat. I don't know if people would have been okay with that. Yeah, I I I'm actually glad com- that they went with something like Cowboys or Wranglers compared to something Flames related and that type of thing. Like you you've been there and you've done that. You don't mm-hmm. need to do it again. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see as more things come out and uh you know what the jerseys look like whether they're the same or whether they're you know a little bit more modified. I'm what and- they might do for an alternate. 
Like, I'm actually curious I don't, what they might do yeah, for alternates. I, I could be wrong here, but I, I don't know if a whole lot of AHL teams actually have specific alternates. Um, well, I, I know the, I know Stockton did. I know they had a black one for a period there. Yeah, but, uh, I think sure that there's certain that. teams that, like, because they're, uh, you know, I've worked in the junior level, too, and um, I'm not mm-hmm. saying that this is still pro, it's not junior, but uh, kind of on that similar path of these teams have uh, theme nights and stuff, right? Um, right. where they're actually mm-hmm. able to help, you know, whether it's something related to, you know, the local hospital, their children's hospital, where they'd make a design uh, of that specific mm-hmm. jersey. And then they they wear it for one night and then they auction it off. Um, you know, I, whether that was the Stockton team, you know, there was a baseball team or something like that in the same city. So they yeah. wore baseball jerseys, like a Star Wars night or something like that. So I think that there's some teams, and I, I know what you're talking about. It was like a blackish gray one that they had. Yeah, yeah that's um uh, but I know that there's a lot of teams just rely on that six, seven times a year that they get to wear alternate, you know, cool design jerseys and stuff like that. So maybe who knows, like who knows what they're going to look like. It'll be very cool to see. Um, yep. I know that I saw uh, a bunch of stuff, obviously <laughs> inside the saddle them, they have to do it because there's pictures of Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk plastered everywhere right, throughout right. the concourse of the saddle dome. So um uh, there was a lot of uh, some images from uh, the Saddle Dome of all that stuff being taken down. And then I yeah. can't remember the account. So I'm sorry if you're listening and I don't credit you. I can't remember the account. But um, there were some pictures of a lot of new decals being put up in the Saddle Dome right now. But they're the, they're of the retro scheme, the color scheme, right? Of yes. the red and the right. yellow. Where mm-hmm. if you went to the Dome last year and years prior, even though that they're still wearing, you know, the retro colors and they made the switch full time. Uh, during the COVID year, there still was a lot of the black and uh, red theme, right? You know, like the the the, the 2010s oh, yeah. mm-hmm. style jerseys yeah. and like the old four jerseys and stuff. It was still you would walk around the concourse. That's the vibe that you got. Was it still that? So that's kind of what clicks in my head of like, okay, well they're switching the entire concourse around to to red and yellow, that retro theme. The stock are you calling them fucking Stockton man? <laughs> Calgary Wranglers will probably have that color theme, right? Because it's their building too. So, I mean, yes. that'll be cool to see. I mean, yeah, we can talk about, you know, the saddle and people oh, are just going uh, to dunk One on other thing, by the way, one other piece of new thing that's been added to the saddle dome is uh, the the Pacific Division banner. Right, right. It's up there now, um, as posted by Rick Tulsi on Twitter, who tweeted about right. doing do some cleaning stuff at the dome and whatnot. And then, one of the photos that he posted it ended up seeing that there that the banner is already up there. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think mean, we knew that. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. very early on, I think as soon as they even got bounced, uh, Pike had talked about that on his show about how they're not going to do like, they're not going to do a ceremony. They're not the Nashville predators where they're not no, going to, you know, have an no. event night for it and raise the banner. And uh, you know, I don't know if that's a different case if um you know, and we'll get into some delusional takes later, but if, if Calgary would have got past Edmonton and, you know, lost to Colorado in six games or something like that, and it was hard fought and they did everything they could, you know, maybe then, maybe then they would um, have like a banner raising or something like that. Cause that's not necessarily a failure, but you know, I don't know if I want to use failure as the right word, but getting swept by the Oilers isn't exactly a reason to, to oh, celebrate never. that you won the Pacific division. Well, you remember too, right? They won a division in 19 as well. And there was a banner that was going to go up, but that was quietly put up. It wasn't a big ceremony. Yeah. Probably. Same thing though. Basically like yeah. you basically got swept by Colorado, right? So you, mm-hmm. you get out in yeah. Colorado by five, swept by the others in the next round. There's nothing, you know, this is the, an organization that doesn't celebrate that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's cool mm-hmm. to see. And like, at the end of the day, they still won the Pacific division, which is really cool. And it was a great accomplishment. Um, that team's kind of, not the entire team, but you lost two of your best players and a really good defenseman and, you know, a bunch of AHL prospects and, and then Cal Yarn Croak. But um, there's not really a whole lot to look back on on that other than it's just a place in the standings, right? So yeah, I think it's exactly. cool. Like, And the, the cool thing about that banner too is, again, kind of what I was talking about, about the theme of the Saddle Dome potentially changing. Uh, right. That banner, I believe I saw it with the white flame logo where all the other ones have. Yeah. The black, however, even in, you know, when they won 2019, whatever, that black logo was still the primary logo. Yeah, right? so they're... still the primary logo. So the first banner since 94 that has had the white retros. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. one thing I hope for, too, and I, like, 
I mean, I'm, I notice this maybe more than, than other people do is you can still buy in Alberta, you can still buy the flames license plate, but still the black logo. So yeah. like, I don't know, I wouldn't buy one cause that's not the logo anymore. Unless, you know, they're doing something crazy for the reverse retros or whatever that's coming out. But um, yeah, I think that the team's hopefully moving in a direction where this is the entire switch of the theme and uh, you know, the style of the jerseys and what happens. And, you know, yeah, I guess you got to shine well, up that side. I mean, I'll just say though, the Oilers went back to their retro style full time. And then they switched about six years after they switched back to the retro style. So you never know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, but that was a real, uh, I don't understand that one. And in my opinion, they're switching right back and they really should have never left in the first place. I mean, I don't know if you noticed this kind of stuff too, but like, um, I don't think they did it too many times last year, but they definitely did it. Um, I don't even know if they did it all last year, but they did it in the bubble year because they were playing, you know, three games in Toronto where they would wear the reds on the road. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, again, I don't want to dunk on the saddle dome, but um, in different lighting, in different arenas, the red pops a lot better. It looks a lot better than it does in the saddle dome, to be perfectly honest, from a TV perspective and in the, in the actual viewing, you know, you're sitting in the stands, it looks the same to me, but if you watch the flames last, or the COVID year or whatever, when they played Toronto, they wore the red jerseys in Toronto. I just thought yep. that they popped a lot better. Um, well, even, I remember too, the Leafs wore their St. Pat's uh, jerseys. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the game I'm game talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the Reds just popped like that. And then even in the bubble year when they were playing up in Edmonton, when they wore the Reds with the black logo, they just look completely different. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm not oh, dunk- yeah, I'm not knocking on the saddle though, but they just they don't look as good, man. So my whole point of what we were talking about there is, um, you know, the Oilers had a new arena. Uh, maybe they thought that, you know, orange would look better in that rink. And, you know, you, you, that's, that's just, I guess their decision, but they're going back. Are you trying to suggest, uh, are you trying to suggest that the Leafs should go back to white jerseys being the home and the dark jerseys being the road jerseys? Um, I don't know if I would say that full time, but I, I actually like it when they do it a lot more and, uh, mm-hmm. not even from a Calgary standpoint, I noticed that they did it a lot more last year, um, because certain teams, um, uh, certain teams, you know, brought in a, a white jersey. Like, like a, an example would be like the LA Kings last year. Uh, they wore that white jersey with the silver helmets, whether you like that or not. Um, they chose to wear that a lot more, and they would. Um, so a team like you know, I think it was even maybe it was like maybe it was Colorado or something like that. So when you know that you're um, traveling to LA, you're doing the California swing. So you're paying, you're playing San Jose. Anaheim and LA on a three game road trip. And you know that LA is scheduled to wear those whites. So you got to bring the roads. Uh, You can put in a request to the league to be like, okay, well, we're we're only going to bring one set of jerseys. So against San Jose and against Anaheim, then those guys would have to wear their whites at home. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if about full time, but I think they should be doing that a lot more. Definitely a lot. I don't even disagree. I don't even disagree with that. I, yeah. I kind of like that. I kind of like that proposition as well. Yeah. Too, like maybe, uh, I mean, I don't mind it, but I, I just think they should be doing it a lot more maybe rather than switching full time. Like maybe it's a 50, 50 thing. Like, yeah, I think it would be cool. Um, especially if now Blassie, that- if Blassie came back full time uh, and it was used maybe for a game or two on the road, that would pop so well. Yeah. Well, it, it all kind of depends on your matchup too. Right. Like, uh, it, it, I think it would be cool now that the Oilers went back to their actual good jerseys, not those pieces of shit that they had before. Um, mm-hmm. But now that they're back to the retro ones, yeah, it might be cool to see when the when the Flames go up to Rogers to see the Oilers in white and the Flames in red, right? Mm-hmm. Or if yeah. you do that, you know, you know, maybe the Oilers reverse retro is a, a lighter color and they're playing at home on a Saturday. Night. And, I'm, you know, again, I'm just shouting this out there because wishful thinking the schedule is so stupid that we play them all, all before Christmas. Yeah. But, um, you know, maybe you're playing the Oilers at home and they want to wear their ver- reverse retro at home. And instead of wearing, you know, if they're a light one, instead of wearing a red, you go with the black one that we've got or something like that, right? So I think that there's unique combinations that you can do with that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, I do think more teams are going to try to do some more unique stuff especially well now the jersey sponsors are changing but last year like the um i think it was maybe even two years ago colorado switched their helmet colors and their pants colors and the blue jackets yeah. are switching their mm-hmm. pants colors next year and there was a series of la- the pants are horrible on yeah on the they're, they're, like, those they're okay suck. it took me a while because i'm so used to the colorado black you know growing up watching Sackett and Forge, where I'm, I'm used to watching seeing the black so it was a bit of a change um but there was actually a series last year where carolina um wore black helmets 
with their red jersey. So they're mm-hmm. Carolina at home, they're red, 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 red helmet, red jersey, right. red pants, red socks. So they went black, red, black. So when they were in black helmets, red jerseys, black pants, and black gloves. So they kind of like NFL style, right? Where it's not a new jersey, but you modify the pants and you modify the gloves and the helmets and that kind of stuff too, right? So mm-hmm. maybe more teams are going to do that. I don't know. Like you'll, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what's going on with jerseys and stuff because um, right. the Vancouver one leaked the reverse retro. Um, so either teams are going to start putting them out there now, or they're just going to continue to leak. And you'll be able to see what some of these reverse retros are going to look like. I would imagine that a lot of them are going to get posted, you know, in the next six, you know, four to six weeks here. Uh, Cause you want Jersey sales and, you know, you want people to be excited and you know, we yeah. can talk about that then. Huberto yeah, went to, I'm assuming the thing that I'm assuming here. And, and again, I have no sources. Mm-hmm. I have no Intel on this at all, yeah. but I'm sort of what my assumption is telling me is I think the alternate that the flames will be using next season will be released sometime between now and have to think early September. Yeah. You the, would think so. I can't remember what I think probably. that the reverse retros were all announced on like the same day um something like that yeah yeah so it's hard you know and then you got the vancouver one leaked and then other people talking about this one and that one so who knows man but um you you want to get those jersey sales going and started you know you know whether or not people want to debate all you only got them for i actually have one question i want to ask you and mm-hmm. this is something i thought a lot about do you think the nhl should bring back the old school old school shield the old school shield, like the logo, like the yes, the, like yes. the, brown the, the one? orange and black shield. Do you think they should bring that back? I think that they should bring it back like they're doing and make it part of the reverse retros that they're doing. Right. Um, right. You know, I, th- I can't, I, you know, I, I haven't looked it up, so I didn't know what, what each year looked like with each logo and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. So I think that if they're going to continue, whether, cause they've got Adidas for the next this year and then one after that, and then they're gone. Yeah. Um, so whether they're going to continue to do a new reverse retro every year or continue with the old ones or go from a different era, I think they would use that logo with the corresponding years that they want the teams to go from or whatever it was, but it's tough because not every team was around at a certain period of time and it's right. tougher to do. I know that way, way, way back um, in the late two thousands, you know, getting a little off topic here, uh, the CFL had tried to do something where they went back and did like, okay, each team, because it's oh, different yeah, though in the that. CFL because they only have X amount of teams. The NHL has got 32, but they went, okay, uh, this year, your jerseys are going to, your, your retro jersey is going to be from the seventies. And then mm-hmm. the next year it's going to be in the eighties and then they're going to go to the nineties and then they just stopped. So yeah. I kind of wanted them to see if they bring that back, but that's maybe what, that's what the NHL is trying to do, but it's tougher because right. You know, but then, but I guess, you know, if they, if they choose to do, okay, we're going to do eighties jerseys. Well, sorry, Seattle, you weren't around then. So you got to find a different way to do that. That kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Right. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, I'm yeah, that's kind of what I thought, but back to what I was saying, there's, you want to get these jerseys out there because Jonathan Huberto announced that he's wearing number 10, you know, as much as, um, mm-hmm. as much as people are going to bitch and complain, well, he's gone after one year, what the uh, fuck off. Um, he, he's here for this season and people are still going to buy that Jersey, man. So, they will. um, yeah. So that's the thing is like people, you know, if you're, you know, it's Alberta, man, things are still tough. And here in Alberta, you know, you go to the grocery store and it's 10 times what it cost, you know, two years ago. But so people are, you know, if you're only holding out for that one Jersey, you can only buy that one Jersey this year. Are you going to wait and see what the reverse retro looks like? Or are you going to just put it all into the red one? So I think a lot of people would wait and see, what the reverse retro looks like and put a Hubert O or oh, yeah. a Uyghur on it. And or you never even know, what the third Jersey is going to be, because yeah, exactly. I think the rumor is there's going to be four jerseys this season in the fold. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And then obviously the, the third Jersey won't change um, into next year where the reverse retro might. Um, but yeah, like I said, you never know um, before the start of the season. Well, and that's another thing people are trying to decide on too, is like, do you, and that's actually my biggest question to people is, do you get the reverse retro with Hubert O on it? Or do you get the third that you know is going to be around for the next couple of years? Because it's like with the reverse retro, it's probably going to be only be around for one year and then it's gone. Yeah, it that's may never true. be used again. So. Yeah, that's true. It depends what it looks like. If it looks completely badass, then yeah, for sure. But yeah. I don't know, man. It all depends on what it looks like, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, people are also going to wait and see. Like you know, talk about uh, Huberto went out for for dinner with with Bradtree Living, right? <laughs> You know, people are, oh, sign him, sign him, sign him. Like, 
I think that that obviously was a little bit of the, uh, you know, let's see where you're at right now too. But at the end of the day, it's also Brad just doing his job. The most uh, important question is, is where did they go for dinner last night? And what was on the food menu when they, where they went to? Fucking Boston pizza, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he's going to get all his discounts at Boston pizza. No, man. Like it's people are joking. And it's like the easy joke to make that he took him to Boston pizza, but you know, he probably took him somewhere real, really, really. Oh, I nice. think so too. Yeah. Really, really fucking nice. So oh, yeah. he's just doing his job, man. Like whether that was a conversation yeah. about, you know, getting a feel for where he is at his contract and stuff like that at the end of the year, or at the, at the end of the day, it's still it's still a player that's going to be part of your your organization, right? So you want to get to know that player, um, you know, whether they've met or not. I don't know if, um, you know. I think you prior. wish, though, when you're seeing that, though, when it comes to Huberdo and Trelevin mean for dinner in person, I think the thing that you look at when it comes to that is you wish that was the same case with Goudreau and, and Trelevin. And how all um, that ended up playing. It out. maybe happened, but, but you, it maybe it did. It just wasn't. Maybe went. Maybe it didn't go public, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a certain different situation, right? I'm not saying that the Gaudreau one was a negative situation, but it wasn't as positive as um, Huberto's situation. So maybe they didn't want to put that out there. Maybe he did. Maybe he did meet with them and said, "No, we're just going to meet here, this and that. Are you going to come mile that? Whatever it is, man. I just didn't want to put it out there." Right. where I, it was Elliot that tweeted it out there. So maybe it was public, you know, um, Jonathan Huberto's got a very outgoing agent, as you know, who isn't afraid to say Alice. things. And so, yeah, exactly. So he's not afraid to say stuff. And, you know, maybe he did, maybe he, his agent is like, yeah, they're going out for dinner. I, you know, I want people to see this man. You know, I want people yeah. to get excited that he's here in Calgary, right. Where, you know, maybe Goudreau's agent was a little more conservative. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, man, I, I think that's just tree doing his job, man. Just trying to get a feel for his player. Yeah. This is a guy that, uh, you know, you're going to, you know, you're hoping that you're going to throw the bag at him and get him signed to a big contract, but whether you do or not, you're still going to lean on him to be one of your top players, if not your top player heading into next season. So you got to get a feel for the guy. You got to know the guy. Um, people do it all the time, man. Whether it's, uh, hey. you're, you're working sales job, you're in construction job, whatever. If you bring on somebody new and you know that they're a lot of promise, you're going to go have a beer with them, man. And get to know them, right? So that's that's uh, that's his boss, and that's that's probably how it went. And you know, you can read into it as much as you want, and we're hoping for the best on that front. But we'll see what happens on that one, man. So now, my question to you is: Is uh, do, do you think Huberto signs an extension before training camp? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Um, I don't want people okay. to get mad at me for that. Um, yeah, I could be wrong, and I kind of do hope that I'm wrong, but I, I'm gonna say no. Um, yeah. You know, there's two ways of looking at it. I, I think that he's probably really disappointed that he wasn't able to get a long-term deal from the Florida Panthers um, this off season, because he's coming off a career year, 115 points. You would think that that's when your value is going to be the absolute highest. Right. So, you know, it, it's just tough because if he, if he really believes in the city and tree living and this and that, like lock, lock him up now, sign him up now, because he's coming off of a career year. Um, right. You know, he could come into Calgary and put up 70 points and then they could go, okay, well, we offered you 10 and a half million last summer. Well, that ain't, that's not the offer this summer. Right. So that's the thing. He's got to weigh all this kind of stuff out. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, do I accept this deal you right sometimes now? Sometimes have to bet on yourself. Yeah. That's the thing. You want to bet on yourself. If he bets on himself and he puts up another hundred points, then, then it's there. But like I said, if he comes in and you know, he goes to a 70 to an 80 point player, it's not, it's not going to be there anymore. Right. So, uh, exactly. yeah, but at the end of the day, there's also, if he does that with the flames and they can't offer him what he wants, he goes to free agency and there will be teams that'll pay him that. Right. So, oh, sure. um, as much as, as much as I want it to happen, I don't see it happening. I think you guys are smart enough to, to see what it's like to play, um, play in the city, see if it's good, see if it's a good fit. The city's a good fit. The teammates are a good fit. If the team is successful, all that kind of stuff, man. So I'd like to see it happen. And would I be shocked if it happened? No, but I, I don't, I don't see it happening. No, unfortunately not. Yeah, so, um, for sure. you know, that's, that's going to be, unfortunately we thought that debate was over with, um, you know, do we sign them? Do we trade them? Do we get assets? You know, the whole Johnny Kachuk thing, unfortunately we have to live it again, but that's the price that we paid to not go through a rebuild and be like absolute shit next year. Right. So we'll see what happens. There's a, a lot of dominoes that need to fall. One of those dominoes is, Andrew Mangiapane, who is scheduled for arbitration this Friday. We'll see what happens with that, man. Um, you think I, that deal gets done this week, right? I want to say yes. Yeah. yes. I do want to say yes that that deal will get done. 
Um, I don't know how to say it's too comparable. Um, and again, we can post this doesn't matter. Any, anything we say, we just get fucking ripped apart online anyways. But uh, like that, yes, for Brat, when I think he was going to arbitration or something and he had asked for about four and a half and or no, sorry, he, um, the Devils wanted four and a half and he wanted six or something like that. Um, he had a pretty good year. I think it was like 73 points or something like that. So not a full comparison, but I can kind of see maybe where that's going, where the Flames want to get Manji kind of around that you know, mid to high four. And he's probably going to be asking around that, you know, six to six and a half. Right. So can you settle in the middle at a five or a five and a half? Hopefully. I mean, maybe maybe. it's a good bargain. That's a good bargain. If you ask me. Yeah. Like, I mean, just, you know, you you look at, I know Manji Pawnee had a, had a good year, but I also feel like I'm going to look it up right now. Just make sure I'm, I'm accurate about it. I feel like he tailed off at the second half of the season. Like, I feel like he, you know, I don't have his first half versus his second half. You know, he's got 55 points last year, but I feel like he could have finished with a lot more than that. You know, you go third, you know. It, and you're, you're right. You're actually right about that because uh, he had an incredible first half and he was scoring on the road like crazy. Yeah. And then something happened. I don't know if it maybe was the whole COVID situation yeah. that happened with them, but something happened to him afterwards where he just wasn't quite the same player. Yeah, but it's weird that like it happened when the team turned it around, right? Like when after right. that COVID thing, we went on a big heater, right? And I'm not saying that he didn't score complete, but I I do remember he went on a pretty decent stretch of not doing much. Then yeah. to see his stats right here, 82 games played, 35 goals, 20 assists, right? If you mm-hmm. think that he kept that pace of play, that might have been closer to 40 goals and 30 assists or something like that, right? Which could uh, have been in the 70 point. Yeah, 70 and that's where point. Brat was last year, right? Mm-hmm. So you look at it, 32 yeah. points, 2019, 20, 32 points, 2020. Um, 2020 is a little bit different because it was 56 games. So you got to prorate that kind of stuff. And then 55 points in 82 games last year. So is that worth 6 million? uh on paper probably not no. but but you know he scored 35 goals last year right you know if he scores 40 this year right so that's kind of the whole thing about the arbitration which kind of is going to be very very intriguing is where they're going to end up between what the flames want and what he wants right you know if you're able to do that five year five and a half or a five by five like that would probably be ideal right because you know 35 goals man that's a lot but at the same time that could have been 45 with uh with how he that could have been even be that could have even been 50 for all we know and the thing That's is the thing, right too right like it's who is he gonna play with right um you know he wasn't playing you know with johnny much or no you know kachuk or lindholm or whatever you know who's he gonna play with next year i know we got him penciled in with backland but you never know what the flames are gonna do in sutter like sutter could find a way to put him with hubert or could have put him with a lindholm or something like that like you know that's the whole thing johnny's gone well it's now it's your turn to step up man so I think that they want to get this done because then uh, that also gives them a little bit more clarity on where they're going with their money, right? You know, you can put all these scenarios out there that if we sign them at five or we sign them at six, then you've got X amount to spend. But then if that actually happens, then you know for sure. And, you know, whether there's players out there, or there's a deal to be made, you know, whether that's moving out Big Luch or whatever happens with Monaghan, you're going to find a way to, to bring in some players, right? And I think that's kind of what Bradtree Living has to do right now is find a way to bring in some players because if you make another big move and I'm not saying it's, you know, Kadri, I think that's kind of a foregone conclusion that it's the Islanders at this point, but if it's somebody else be a trade or something like that, that's another star that you bring in. That's just another reason for Huberto and Weger to be like, okay, you know, this place is starting to look legit. Like I can see myself here. They got the goalie. We've got the defense. We've added another star to the already amount of stars that we have with Lindholm and Huberto and Amanji Apani. And to, I'm not, again, Guys get mad at me when I use the word star on Twitter. Come af- come after me. But I'm not saying he's a star, but Toffoli knows how to score goals. Uh, Blake Coleman's locked up here for a while. He's won Stanley Cups, you know, stuff like that, right? So um, it'll be very, very, very interesting to see what uh, what the Flames are able to do. So with it being, you know, the off season, we call it the silly season. Um, kind of our last topic here is this is where uh, our friends up north have just been in absolute fine form on Twitter recently. Like it's it's weird. Like Oiler fans, they go quiet and then they just appear out of nowhere, just talking absolute shit out of nowhere. And this is a guy 
that's kind of popped up on Twitter. And this is the only time you're ever going to get attention on our podcast, man, but we can't not talk about it. Um, is this guy DNL Euler analytics, man? Uh, like the, like when, when did you, did, did you first see him? Like it was a Pat chirp or somebody was chirping him, man. Um, hold up, hold up, hold oh. up, hold up, hold up. Sorry, Noah. Sorry, Noah. I oh. am checking my phone right now because something just happened mid podcast that happened. So let me Wait. find it first. We'll talk about this dipshit Euler fan for uh, after this, but um, we're recording mid podcast. All of Elliot, Elliot Friedman, Oliver Shillington and Calgary settled their arbitration two years at oh. 2.5 uh, AAV. Oh, wow. Yeah. Then so that is a f- oh, oh, yeah. So that's Hold on a second. Right I'm now. just going to put this out here. We're recording the show, the show, this happened, the show. So yeah, Oliver Shillington is has been locked up two years, two and a half mil. Um wow. mid podcast, yeah. Mid podcast. Oh, well, what are so what are your thoughts? Two years, two that's exactly five. what I thought um he was gonna get. That's exactly what yeah. I thought he was gonna get. Mm-hmm. I think uh I think even Ryan Pike had put that in his projection as to uh what he thought Shillington was gonna get. Two years that's, of two that's and a, that's a good that's a good value. That's a good value. Um I now guess. now it's Manjapani who needs that as we we were talking about it a few minutes ago. We we're talking about Manjapani. Now that needs to get settled. And now I think you have a better idea as to where things are gonna go then from there. You know, whether to make a trade or sign in, all these types of different with things. are you talking about with Shillington? No, with Manjapani, like once that's all settled. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like if, once that's all settled, yeah, you want to absolutely knock this kind of stuff out, uh, get it dealt with right away. Um, I don't, I don't think you want to put that, you know, uh, put it out to arbitration with, with you know, you, you could end up, you could have ended up biting, you could have winning, but it couldn't end up biting you. Like I think, um, I think it was Lance Boma a couple of years, like way long ago, he went to arbitration and just completely <laughs> screwed us. Uh, I'm just fucking putting this out there right now, but yeah, this is, uh, you know, we don't, we didn't get the breaking Kachuk stuff during a, during a, a live podcast, but we got, um, Oh man, when have that been something? Yeah, no, 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 but I mean, it was too late at night here, but, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it, man. And, you know, just because he's, um, he's out there, you know, at the, the two year, two and a half doesn't mean, um, doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to pencil him in because now you've got 10 defensemen um you've got 10 defensemen under a one-way contract so somebody's right. gonna go on waivers somebody's gonna get dealt whether that you know what do you do with valamac they got a bunch of new guys coming in here so it's um yeah it's it'll be very very interesting to see what they do on the on the blue line i, I wasn't shocked at this number like i said um you know it's 340 on a on a tuesday and we're recording and this stuff all drops right now so kind of scrambling to to put this out there to everybody in flames nation. So yeah, everybody that's listening to this knows that I'm posting this as it's happening here. So check out on our, uh, our flame social media on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever you want to do. So yeah. So interesting, man. Like it's, uh, it's cool to see. And I'm kind of hoping that we get that, um, get that Manjapani news before the actual arbitration here. It happens on Friday. So that'll be yeah. uh, interesting to see. So anyways, yeah, I, I, my, I was taught, we were trying to dunk on this Oiler fan and it just, um, my phone just started lighting up and whenever I see it, it's kind of light lights up more than normal. Um, yeah. It's, you know, uh, something's, you yeah. know, something's going on. Yeah, exactly. So backtracking now that this is uh settled and, and, you know, Ryan Pike's going to be on this stuff, uh, backtracking to, um, what we were talking about is Oiler fans being in fine form this off season and trying to get under flame skin. There's this guy Oilers analytics. He's got a stupid picture of a skull and a hat. And yeah. You know, the first tweet that he put out that got everyone's attention was putting something on there. It was like, Jack Campbell is the best goalie in the Pacific Division, and it's not even close. <laughs> like, I I don't understand that one whatsoever. If you go through the Pacific Division, top to bottom, uh, no, Seattle, they're not definitely top goalies in the division, that's for sure. You know, got Seattle in there. Um You know, this is a Flames podcast, but even if it was a, another podcast, Markstrom is... He finished in the Vesna voting. Markstrom is the best goal in the Pacific Division. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if he got fucking swept by the Oilers. He still had an outstanding regular season. He's the best goal in the mm-hmm. Pacific Division. Then you've got a guy like Demko. Demko is still a very good goalie. He's the reason why Markstrom is a flame, right? So what the fuck? 
And then you got Gibson. John Gibson is still an Anaheim Duck, right? He requested a trade or whatever, wanted out, whatever. He's still an Anaheim Duck. Gibson is a way better goalie than Jack Campbell. I saw some people putting up. Yeah, can I just put this out right here, Hmm. right now? Jack Campbell's got that. Jack Campbell's got that overrated feel into it because he was a Leaf and because he was a late bloomer. He's only had a like a year and a half period of of play and stats and all that stuff. He's got the whole Toronto thing with him, which is why which is why people are saying, "Oh, Jack Campbell's a a world beater for the Oilers now." No, he's not. Well, I just. I, I don't understand where like the background is where he's an elite goaltender who's won a playoff round. Like, yeah, like, has the, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, what happened a couple of years ago with the Montreal, like, uh, yeah. so there's some, <laughs> it's just been some outstanding tweets that this guy's have. And it's getting to the point where the guys actually, like I said, before the Shillington stuff, um, this is the only tension that you're ever going to get from us, man. But like say, he's saying Kachuk and Gaudreau left the flames because they knew their old hag of a coach Sutter is going to coach that organization six feet below the ground. Oilers on the other hand, have one of the best driven analytics coach in the game in Woodcroft flames fan. Enjoy your 1965 coaching. Like I actually can't wait until it's like fucking December and the Oilers are imploding and they've all turned on Woodcroft. And just try to run him out of town, man. Like, this is just like, it, it's just absolutely wild, man. Like, and this one's good too. This one was probably the best one. It was, um, Avs fans don't understand how lucky they got this year. If the Oilers had a healthy nurse and dry, plus a goalie like Campbell, you wouldn't be the Stanley Cup champs right now. It would be the Oilers. <laughs> like, the fucking level of delusion, man, on this guy. Like yeah, it is. But now it's actually bad. just reading through it. It's it's an attention grab, that's for sure. Like oh, it's yeah. you know, people are starting to like just looking at like the the amount of likes and stuff that he has on the tweets. People are like, Okay, you're a fucking idiot. And they're moving on, right? Like he got his little five minutes of fame, whatever. But that's that's what the that's what the majority of um what the Oilers fan yeah. base does is it's like I said, it's kind of mm-hmm. quiet. And then, uh, then it kind of comes, <laughs> it kind of comes up like, uh, comes up on you here. And now I, another one that I want to find in this one, I, I actually was just crying, laughing at, at this tweet that this guy had, had put out, uh, another Oilers one. So just give me a second here. I'm just going to pull it up here. Cause this was probably one of the funniest ones I've ever seen. Um, a guy, uh, again, they're all like burner accounts that don't have like actual names or faces behind this guy's accounts. McDryberg is his account name and his name's like Edmonton. He's got a picture of McJesus. And uh he was chirping. Well, first of all, he was talking about Evander Kane. And uh, and again, why why the Oilers seem to just bow down and kiss Evander Kane's feet is is crazy. But they're the same guys that wanted him prosecuted. And as soon as he signed him, he's an absolute saint. Um this this guy was saying, this Edmonton McDryberg guy was saying that. Uh, making a comparison that Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Gaudreau leaving Calgary, he wanted to make the comparison that Brett Kulak and Evander Kane stayed loyal to the Oilers organization and came back and signed at a discount. And that was his direct comparison was Brett Kulak and Evander Kane compared to Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk. So he compared... Yeah. Oh, that's so, cute. That's pretty damn cute comparing a guy like Evander Kane, which I obviously I won't get into all that stuff on the show. And then bottom six defenseman in Brett Kulak. It's just that's cute. Yeah. That's it's sick. just funny that um that it's like you're comparing two guys that one of them played half a year in Edmonton or 50 games or whatever, and then another guy you got him at the trade deadline. And you're calling these guys more loyal to their fan base than, you know, yeah, like, bad. it's just, uh, it's just your daily dose of Edmonton. It's only going to get worse as the season starts is, mm-hmm. you know, they, they have been yeah. voted the second most delusional fan base in all the NHL. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got guys out there saying that. So never forget that. Yeah, no. So, so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, we got a little bit of interesting news with Shillington dropping there at two years, two and a half. So it'll be very interesting to see what the fan base thinks of that contract. I think that that's, yep. um, I think that's expected, man. Like I, I could not see them going any higher than that. Um, you know, maybe it, it's kind of the same thing as Mangiapane. Like it's just, it's not enough body of work to command that, 
that high value of a three or a four million, that kind of stuff. And and I think that um giving him the two year at two and a half, they still want to see what more he can do, right? Um, another thing too is you know, maybe just completely overthinking it. I don't know, but you know, if you don't give him a long contract, maybe he's uh he's more valuable in a trade to a team, right? That wants to give him a shot and see if he's available and yeah, that kind of stuff. So very interesting to see. Um, yeah, we'll see, you know, hopefully next week we'll be able to, and we should be able to, because it's arbitration, we'll be able to talk about what Mangiapane has been able to do, um, that kind of stuff too. And, and again, brought to you by our good friends at Montana's. Make sure you get that. Get Montana's messy rib fest. Go check it out. It's a Canadian staple. The ribs are great. So thank you, Montana's, for their sponsor. And uh, this has been yet another episode of Shot Down in Flames.